First, we'll give the deck a quick shuffle and let you select any card that you wish. So let's just say you select this card about halfway to the deck. So we have the three of diamonds, and you know what? We'll just um, we'll leave it about halfway. Doesn't quite matter where we leave it. And at that moment, your card has now jumped to the bottom of the deck. And it's really, really that simple. So if you want to learn that move, you're in the right place. So let's get into the tutorial right now. Now this move is a derivative of the Cardini change. Now I'm not sure if this move has been produced by anyone else. As far as I've ever seen, I'm the one that came up with it. So if someone knows that someone else has come up with it, let me know so I can give credit to whoever that person may be. Uh, I'll, let, I'll put their name down in the, in the description and in the pinned comment so that way I can give credit to who actually created this move. Uh, but first, you guys want to see probably what the Cardini change looks like. So let's just say we just take the top card right here, the seven of spades, and um, well, you can make it vanish or change to another card at the blink of an eye, like so. So it either can vanish like that, or if you just take, um, let's say, a ten of hearts. So right now, clearly, you only you have this card here. But then with a snap of your finger, just now it is the ace of clubs. So. That is the Cardini change, and it's the derivative of that color change. I have taught that color change here on the channel, and I'll leave it in the description and popping up at the top of the screen. So now let's actually get into how this uh, control works. So basically, uh, you're going to take it, you can either do this for a camera, which I think would be easiest, um, because it is a little bit angle sensitive, a lot like the Cardini changes. Um, but if you can get it with enough cover, and your hands are big enough or you're, you're, you have the right angle on it, I do think you can do this uh, in person as well. So here's how you will be doing this. First dribble down about halfway through the cards or you can just riffle down. I don't really care how you do it. I like to dribble down because it feels a little bit more fair to me. So let's say they select this card as, as well. This is the Eight of Diamonds and it truly is a free selection. It doesn't have to be a force. Now at this point, I'm going to do it with no cover, so that way it looks a little bit uh, easier for you guys to see. So, Eight of Diamonds is the card, and as my hand comes over, and I'm about to set the deck on top, I'm going to pull this card down, underneath, down to the bottom. That's why I don't take the card here, and the card's on top. I don't flip it back over before I set the other half on top of the deck. What I don't do is this what you would most of the time do. Eight of spades, dribble the cards back on, and that's it. This time, you leave it face up. You come over the top, you do the pull, and then you can either dribble it or set it back down depending on uh, how advanced you are into magic as light of hand. So now here's the actual mechanics of this move. First, if you don't know how to do the dribble, I have already taught the dribble. I just, whenever I dribble, I use the same mechanics as what you do for the anaconda dribble which is a fantastic beautiful cardistry move which you can seriously get really really high on it so if you want to learn that you can again check it out in the description below so for the cardistry move uh, you now have that for the dribble but here's the actual move for the cardini change so you're going to flip over whatever card it is apparently it's just going to keep on being that duplicate of spades and you're holding it in mechanics grip so with your thumb on the left side, index on top, other three fingers across the other outside. And after you've just done this dribble, you're going to come over the top. Now before you start dribbling, you want to already have it pushed off to here, and you, then you can do the dribble. You don't have to have it all the way underneath. So you have it here like this, and you're going to pull back with your pinky ring in middle, but especially the main one being your pinky. And you're going to pull back until it gets just past. You're gonna have it just past that that border. So here would be straight up, you want it just past straight. At that point you can then dribble all the cards on, on top of the pack, but this one's still here, right? So all you're gonna do at this point is you're just gonna take it right here, and you're gonna leave this hand covering over the top. So I'm just gonna show you one more time at this point. So you have that card here, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna take it and you're gonna dribble it on top, and now it's here, you're just going to leave it covered. And it's super easy at this point to because you would naturally leave it covered there because you would have just been done dribbling the playing cards, right? So you've just been done dribbling it and your hand would have naturally been here. And as these cards are a little bit messy, 
one, even if you did leave it off, it's going to look a little bit weird to have that card there, but you should be driven, bringing it back at that point anyways. So you'll then be coming over to square it up, and this is where it gets really, really, really easy. Now if you had to do this one-handed, I will teach you that as well, but with two hands, you're literally going to take this outside pad of your hand here, and you're literally just going to take it and contact the outside of this card, and you can push underneath as you're squaring it up. Right? So here's how it goes. You flip over the card, and you're going to pull this back, you're going to dribble it down on top, and as you're going to come down, you're going to take this here, and you're going to close it up at the same time. Now when you're doing with one hand, in case you're not really comfortable with pushing that down, if you don't feel like it looks quite right, you're here, you're going to pull it off. After you've done your dribble, even if you just keep that cover there, you're just going to literally, I'm just going to square this up, that makes it a little bit easier for you guys. You're going to take the same thing and you're going to pull back with those fingers, just like so. And it's literally now all set. So I can literally just do that. I literally just sit here most of the day and I just sit here like this. And your color changes will get so much smoother, easier, and it, especially if you're going to do something like a top shot, this is how you practice top shot, honestly. It's such an easy way to just sit there and practice without making cards go everywhere. Just keep on pulling it down and bring it down to the bottom of the deck. And your Cardini changes and top shots will get so much smoother. See, I almost just did it on accident. It just it just gets so snappy and so powerful so, so fast. So just sit there. If you're just in class, if you're at church, if you're wherever you're at, and just sit there and get that muscle memory going. It makes it so, so easy on yourself. I hope you guys liked that tutorial. If you guys do want to see more color changes, I have an entire playlist of color changes I've taught here on the channel, and I'll be leaving it right here on the screen in the description below, popping up at the top, wherever the heck it's going to be. So you guys can check out an entire playlist of color changes. And if you have a specific color change you either want me to teach here on the channel, make sure to drop it down, or just let me know what your favorite color change is. I'd love to be able to know, so either I can teach it, or I can just get to know you a little bit better. Plus, if you guys want to pick up this deck of playing cards, the Orbit V7 Marked deck. Yes, you heard me. There's an Orbit deck that is marked. I'll leave it in the description for 15% off. And I have taught the marking system. So again, link in the description. If you didn't know this deck was marked, now you'll know how it's marked because you probably already have this deck, honestly, because, like, duh. It's, a, it's an Orbit V7 deck, right? You should have it. Like, that's a duh moment, right? Seriously. So clearly you already have this deck. If not, 15% off. You're welcome. And now you'll know how it's marked. So not only is it beautiful for cardistry, but now, guess what? When you're sitting over here and you're doing cardistry, you're just over here, do 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 do, and you're sitting in the corner just doing cardistry all by yourself. Someone's gonna come up to you. Oh, you you perform magic, which already makes me uh, like if I'm doing cardistry, separate the two, please. Thank you. But now they're like, well, actually, yes, I do, and now I have a marked deck to even help me out a little bit more with that. So make sure to check that out. I've got you guys back. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell if you guys do like this type of content. Smash that like button. I'll catch you guys in the next one. This is Card Perfect, signing off.